association, we agree. Some reasonable regulation makes sense. You know, tracking. Okay, let's make it reasonable and, and so that it's transparent. We want to make sure that the black market goes away. Why? Because we want it grown in Montana. We want it grown in Montana. And the only way to make sure that happens is with some type of tracking system. And I mean, we don't really know what it'll look like, but we're hoping to, to be part of the decision process on what that looks like. Um, we think that the caregivers need an ability to provide uninterrupted supply of medicine to their patients. And in a word, it's a caregiver to caregiver exchange. There's a lot of confusion about that across the state. Some counties it's good, some counties it's not good. So when you get to the legal side, you talk to Chris, you know, one of the breakouts, well, is this legal or not? Well, it depends where you live, which is really crazy. You know, so clearly it's got to be uniform across the state. It has to be. But this is something that's critical, again, with the whole issue of losing an entire crop. I'm aware of one grower in Billings that lost 200 plants to this new mite. His entire crop got wiped out. And it wasn't through carelessness. You know, and in the agricultural breakout, they're going to talk about how you need to protect your grows and how you have to protect when you trade a clone, you give a clone to somebody else, what that means, what, what could be going with that clone. Um, we're also supportive of modifying uh, the definitions on metables. So, because right now, they consider a one ounce brownie one ounce of medicine. We all know that that makes no sense. You know, and when we get into the testing side of it, you'll be hearing about how those are dose controlled now. They've actually got how many milligrams of THC are in the cookie, in the brownie, whatever it happens to be. But it's not just ingestible products, it's also salves. And um, uh, you know, there's a great cream out now that if you have psoriasis, you can clear it up in about a week. It re this stuff really does work. So unfortunately, those are, po you know, the psoriasis is a positive unintended consequence of the medicine. And I think that's what we find. You know, we have so many conditions that we're approved for to get your license. But those people have other conditions too many times. It's not just those conditions that this medicine actually helps them with. And so that's why there's a lot of other products available now. Uh, we don't think there should be a, any limit on the number of patients that a caregiver has. Because if a caregiver takes on too many patients and they can't provide the service to the patients that those patients need, what will they do? They will switch caregivers. Let the marketplace decide. You know, that's really the only way to do it fairly. There shouldn't be one caregiver allowed in one city, you know, where he has a monopoly on it. We're against monopolies. We want this to be an open, free range uh, situation. And also, no limit on the number of caregivers. Um, I've got some caregiver numbers which I'll share with you in a couple of minutes. Um, here's what we do disagree with that's in the proposed bill we disagree with two physicians for chronic pain. Right now, there's not enough physicians in the state to make the recommendations anyway, let alone to find a second one. Now, if all physicians were required to live up to their standard of care in providing the patient all of the alternatives available, then we wouldn't have this issue. And maybe there could be two. But for right now, there's just not enough docs recommended. And so, and there's no reason for it. You know, and I, I'll be, this will be an interesting question for our doctors on the panel is, how do you feel about your professionalism being questioned in that you're not qualified to recommend a pain management system to your patients? We're against the prohibition of out-of-state patients. We're against the limiting number of patients. We're against the elimination of affirmative defense, the limitation of medicine within reason. And when I say that, I say, if we're going to stop the black market and we're going to stop people getting the medicine who are not legally allowed to have it, which is our obligation. When you accept being a caregiver, you're, you're obligating yourself to do it right. That means you give it to the people who are on the back of your car, or you're on the back of their car. Uh, that's who you serve. You don't serve people who are not your patients, and clearly people who are not a patient at all. So there'll be some limit. What's a reasonable amount? You know what? We may have time to talk about that at some time. Is it an ounce a day? Is it an ounce a week? There's a lot of caregivers limit patients to an ounce a week, with exceptions. 
somebody really has a chronic problem, they're right at that threshold where they need more, they may need more. It all depends on the circumstances. And the law should reflect the ability to determine on an individual basis what's right and wrong for an individual patient. Um, and, and clearly, we're against basing a Montana law on any other state. There's no other state like Montana. We need to have our own law. All right, there's a lot of rumors. I've just got a couple more minutes and then I'll wrap up. Um, just here's some of the rumors we hear out there. I'm not going to address all of them right here, but I'm going to talk about, you're going to hear about the rest of them during the breakouts. Kids, kids in school, my God, everybody's getting their medical card in school. Okay, that's one rumor. I just heard it in Billings again. They said everybody's talking at the lunch table about how they got their card. Okay, let's find out how true that is. Um, Caregivers are running rampant. There's no control on them. Well, when you hear what's going on by the caregivers that are making these presentations, and by the way, the Growers Association is made up of caregivers and patients. We are all caregivers. We are all patients. We all donate our time. There's no salaries anywhere. But we spend a lot of time on this because we believe in what it's about. Um, there's a rumor we hear all the time. There's no real science behind cannabis. <laughs> you know, too many patients with chronic pain are getting their licenses. God, could there be that many people in the state with chronic pain? Unqualified people getting their licenses. You know what? I'm going to have to agree. There probably have been some people that were not qualified that got their license. Why did they get their license? Because somebody wasn't doing their job. It was either the physician not doing their standard of care or people putting on clinics trying to get people in and just run the numbers through. And so we have to make sure that when clinics are run, that only the patients that are qualified are actually getting the license. Uh, and also, really, I mean, this is, people say, well, caregivers, they just, they're just drug dealers. They just want to push that product out. How many of you are caregivers in the state, in, in here? Good, good, good number. And out of this group, how many of you spend with, with, with one of your patients more than five or six minutes when you're consulting with them. Again, most everybody. Because you know what? You're professionals. Thank you. Uh, real quick, um, people unqualified getting their licenses, you know what? The reason why the traveling clinics started, which by the way was a very good thing, having the clinics, because there weren't enough physicians recommending in the state, it was very important that physicians be made available. Unfortunately, when it got to be advertised that no medical records, five minutes is too long for a doctor's appointment, just come on down, that's where it went south. It was good until then, but that's where it went south because then the physicians couldn't do their standard of care. They couldn't make sure that it was a qualified patient, at least some of them that were participating. Um, but the good news is that the Medical Board of Examiners has put out a new standard of care for their physicians, and you know what? Since they did that, the number of patients every month is now more down to a reasonable growth number. It's not a five, six hundred in a week or in a day. So is the rush over? I don't know that the rush is over. I think there's still a lot of people out there that want to get their license that still can't get to a doctor, that maybe still afraid to. Um, you know, I know Herb's going to talk a little bit about cannabis in the workplace. A lot of people are afraid. So, I mean, there's a lot of issues that go with this. Um, caregivers out of control. Well, first of all, this is pretty interesting. Only 2% of the caregivers have over 41 patients. Most of the caregivers have three or less patients. So whenever the legislator, legislature is talking about regulating caregivers, who, is it, is it Joe that takes care of Mary at home, his wife? You know, what, is he, what, are they, what are they trying to regulate that goes on in the house? We need to be very specific with any type of legislation on, what we're, on who we're regulating. But again, only 2% of the caregivers have more than 41 patients. Uh, yeah, only 44 cardholders statewide, 18 years or under. Yeah. Now, you know, I was at one city council meeting and they said, why would anybody under the age of 18 ever need something like this? And you know what? what the, our answer was simply, well, you know, cancer doesn't really wait till you're 18, necessarily, um, as with other medical conditions. And when you hear Urban's story a little bit later, 
and the age in which he was diagnosed with his medical condition, he should have been able to have it when he was 10 years old. Oh, the other thing is, only kids are getting their licenses. Well, the average age is 41. There's now, I think, six or seven patients over the age of 90. All right? So this is not kids. Now, granted, we had a lot of people in the 20 to 30 age range, and that's why they were freaking out over this. Well, you know what? I think a good question for our medical panel is, why would those 20 to 30 oats have more? Because you know what? They're active in a different way than we were. They live a different life than we lived when we were that age. So they do have more injuries, you know, and more reasons on why they may need it. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the fun one. You know, the pharmaceutical companies say about 25% of the population has chronic pain. We are still at 1.6% of the patients in the state have chronic pain listed as their medical condition. Really? No. How can that be? 1.6, we have 16,000 out of a million. No, we have 16% of the residents who have a card for any reason. They get the chronic pain out of it. No, it, the 16,000 yeah. is chronic pain. Oh, okay. The 16,000 and 500 and something like that are currently on the rolls as of October 1st as being listed under chronic pain. Or other. Or, or with other. Conditions. With other conditions, yes, with other conditions. Thank you. Okay, and so one point, just to reiterate, 1.6% of Montana residents that are registered as patients, medical marijuana. No, no. Okay. A, a, a population of a million. Okay, so 16,000 with, with, that have that as an item on their, on their license. That is just a, that's numbers. Said differently, we have about one twentieth of the number of patients that deserve to be certified for chronic pain based on a statistical argument. Okay.